Well, birthday wishes have been flowing in for the world's favorite statesman, Nelson Mandela, spending his 95th birthday in hospital, though. Joining me now is human rights lawyer and personal friend to Nelson Mandela, advocate George Bezos. Good evening and welcome. We've already agreed that I can call you Uncle George. I'm flattered by young people calling me that. <laughs> so I want to know, what did you do for your 67 minutes? Uh, I went to the Nelson Fund. Uh, Mandela, the, fun, the center of memory. Center of memory, but before that, I went to the house because at every other previous uh, uh, birthday, I took uh, uh, Greek cookies wow. <laughs> for the birthday party and I went and left them at the house. Uh, uh, Grasha Ma Mandela was not there, but I, I left it. Uh, uh, and then I went to the memory. Did they put you to work? Yes. Yes, Un so... Unforgivable. You no, know, the, <laughs> uh, the deputy head had a chat to me about all sorts of uh, affairs of the foundation. Yeah, and they've got some exciting projects in the pipeline. Now, Uncle George, this has been a decades-old friendship, uh, if we understand 65 years or so. You have some very tender recollections about the genesis of your friendship uh, with Madiba. But talk to us about the difficulties of fully expressing that friendship under apartheid. We met at the University of the Witwatersrand. Even though it was called an open university, <laughs> it was one of the very few, including Cape Town, that admitted uh, black people. And uh, uh, they were entitled to sit in the classroom, uh, but that was about it. They couldn't take part in any of the sporting life, the social life. There was nowhere that we could sit down and have a cup of tea there. We couldn't go into the city on the same tram. Uh, we, uh, there were too many things that we couldn't do. And uh, I, I believe that uh, sometimes if you prevent people from doing things, they develop a stronger common purpose to become more friendly uh, in order to show that they have no respect for these differentiations that are taking place. Why were the two of you so drawn to each other? Why did you love him then? Why do you love him now still? Very briefly, my background as a refugee on my country of birth, Greece, was occupied by the Nazis. My father, who had been the mayor and brought down by a dictator two and a half years after he was elected. My grandfather, who was a very strong Democrat, uh, a school teacher in primary school who was a refugee from Asia Minor and explained to us how difficult it was to be rejected by the society that you're living in, built up within me abhorrence of differentiation or segregation or unequal treatment. And here I was, a first year student, a third year student, a wonderful articulate speaker, speaking of, in the main, at the protest meetings that were being held about the plight of uh, African people in particular and black people g generally. I could identify with that. You fought very hard for him. So how did it feel at the Ravonia trial when the, um, the trial judge, Quartus Devet, sentenced uh, Madiba and seven others to life in jail? What was that moment like for you? In some ways, it was a relief. The arrest of the Ravonia accused and the inclusion of Nelson Mandela thereafter, who was already serving a five-year term of imprisonment, <coughs> was uh, used by the regime's media uh, without any regard to the sub rule 
that there would only be one sentence and one sentence only, and that was the rope. They would be sentenced to death and hanged. And uh, we, we worked very hard on it. I think that the reaction of the international community of 90-day detention, torturing that was taking place, the uh, the young people of the world, the trade unionists, uh, the uh, students, uh, their professors, were all up in arms uh, against it. And I think that that played an important role in persuading the judge not to impose the death sentence. And when they said life imprisonment, I think Dennis Goldberg's reaction, whose mother was in the uh, in the uh, audience, but she was a bit hard of hearing and she hadn't heard. And she says, Dennis, my boy, what does he say? What did he say? And he triumphantly stood up, Mom, it's life, it's life. <laughs> uh, well, you know, so it was, it was, to be sentenced to life imprisonment uh, was a very harsh sentence, but there were worse. So, it was a mixture of uh, some relief and great, uh, uh, and great sadness that a person who was your friend, a person who was a fellow lawyer and we did cases together, a person with whom our families met r rarely uh, because of the apartheid. We couldn't go to Soweto without permission. Uh, so it, it was, uh, it was, really an inducement to become even more friendly with one another. Uncle George, you mentioned those delicious cookies at the beginning, the Greek cookies that you dropped off. Now, you and I need three and a half hours to really talk about your history with Madiba, and we will do that at another time. Those little gestures, like, like you said, you have this tradition of dropping off cookies, and so what were some of the things that Madiba would, would share with you, those little special things that are shared between friends? Yes, he, he enjoyed that uh, because uh, after his release, things became easier. Uh, uh, we would go to Villacasi Street uh, in uh, Soweto. We didn't require a permit anymore. And uh, they and some members of his family would come to our, our house uh, during the weekend. Uh, we, my family gave me a birthday party and uh, he would come uh, particularly with uh, Grasa after they were married. And uh, he enjoyed Greek food. We took a trip to Greece together, mm. the four of us, Grasa, Nelson, my wife, Arati, and I, and had a wonderful time. And he, he flattered not only me, but I think Greece said Greece is the mother of democracy and South Africa is its youngest daughter. Mm. Well, you know, we Greeks like other people praising us. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming and sharing some of your personal memories with Madiba. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for asking me. We'll talk to you again, Uncle George. Thank News that moves. ENCA.com.